Well, hello again, everyone, and uh, thanks for visiting once again. Um, there's been a lot of interest um, on Supermarine Spitfires uh, over the last few months, I've noticed, and there are a lot of kits around. In particular, the Airfix 124th scale model has been featured in quite a lot of people's build profiles, uh, and those videos have been exceedingly interesting. Now, um, by chance, quite by chance, in fact, um, I've come by a 148th scale version of the Airfix um, model, and I've decided in the light of a couple of things, first of all, there's a lot of interest about this at the moment, and secondly, that it's this was a gift from somebody, that I'm going to build one of these myself in a, in a short while. Um, if there are one or two of you that know what I do anyway, or what I've been doing up to now, you'll know there's a couple of projects I'm going on about um, on other parts of the channel, um, and um, they'll be finished uh, before very long, and this will be the next project. So I thought what I'd do is a, a little quick look inside the box um, for you guys. Um, I won't um, repeat what lots of other people say about the box packaging and so on and so forth, but um, this is a 148th scale example. So it's um, out of, I think, the six models that I've built in the last 40 odd years. Um, this this is the second, I think, 148th scale that I'm going to attempt building. Um, it comes to me by way of a gift from a colleague um, as a shall we say thank you for doing some work that I did um, to support uh, her in some uh, projects and so on um, and uh, so what I've decided to do is to get the pleasure of building this and uh, I will then make a gift of it to her afterwards um, and she can get the pleasure of looking at it um, and the reason for that is partly because she's obviously given it to me as a present the second thing is because I have today ordered the 132 scale Qatari Spitfire uh, which I'm sure you'll all know about. So that's going to be coming along, I suppose, in February or March or something like that. And I'll get the chance to um, build and keep that one. So this seems to me like a good opportunity to do my research on Spitfire Mark 1As and to um, learn a little bit about this kit and so on and so forth. So let's get a look in the box, shall we? Um, usual box, obviously. It's a nice picture, I think. It looks, looks pretty good, I would say. So... Um, I have opened some of the packaging here, but one of the things that did happen is the instructions and the decals were actually on top of the, uh, the model components, um, and the decals were put inside the book, which I thought was rather good. So I'll put them away there. I don't know who makes the decals for these, um, and I know some of you, you guys out there in modelling land will have a very good idea, but I mean, having a quick look at these, we can see that... Um, there's a, um, a decal for the um, instrument panel and so on and so forth. I think there are even some placards as well. But uh, we've even got the, the red um, canvas covers for the machine gun um, orifices, shall we call them that. Um, let's just zoom back out. Sorry, I went the wrong way there. That's good camera work, wasn't it? Not. Um, so um, that's that. They're, they're pretty good. I'll have a quick glance through the instructions as well for you, and then we'll have a look at the model itself. There's some interesting things in there, which I think might be worthwhile looking at. Um, now, one of the things that drew me to this, and, and I thought I would do a video about this, is because as we go through the, the kit, it's... It looks to me very much like a cut down or shrunk down 124th scale. It looks like um, you could almost have put the 124th scale um, sprue mouldings in the wash, shrunk them and, and you come up with this. Because as you can see, the, the build um, sequences are much the same with side panels, um, which are then populated seats. And the seat looks pretty, pretty damn identical. Um, some small changes in here with the um, uh, the back cover and so on, but uh, that that should come together pretty quickly. I would have thought. Um, as you know, I build these things without pilots, um, and um, you know I shall I shall model this as being really on the flight line, um, ready for operations, that sort of thing. Um, so as we go through there into the cockpit, um, here we have the um, uh, fitting of the the decal. So there'll be all sorts of fitting and weathering and so on and so forth to do here to try and make this nice and smart. Not quite sure what this number um, C20 uh, lever appears to be. It may be a, um, 
um, a manual um, undercarriage pump handle possibly I, I could be wrong with that and I'm you know please correct me if you if you think I am I'm absolutely delighted if you do so um, so we go through to step 15 with the pilot uh, well, I won't be doing that bit shall we say um, I'll say that now and then you have look what look like options for um, canopy open canopy shut uh, and then insertion of the uh, cockpit into the side panels here so it's in it's inserting into the starboard side panel and then adding the port panel after that um, and then after that you can see the um, insertion uh, or the fitting of the um, cowling panel so in the 148th scale example that we're looking at now there is no engine and uh, now it may very well be that perhaps the um, the resin um, aftermarket will come up with something for us um, or for for this kind of model. Uh, that remains to be seen. I, I don't know whether it will, um, because obviously, as we know, um, model engines tend to be under scale size anyway. And I think that that would be magnified at 148 scale. So um, there we are. But my initial um option on this is to go with canopy open in this way with the with the canopy door you know the side the cockpit side door down like that i like the look of that i think that's a good idea so then we move on to options for open gun bays and shut gun bays uh, on on here so there's some cutting out to do there are some holes to drill when we move into the um, wing lower parts and so on and so forth so we need to have a look at that um, make sure that we sight the undercarriage wells correctly. That's that's really quite important. And then the C17 spar. I would suggest it's probably going to be quite important to make sure that's sighted quite centrally. In fact, absolutely centrally. Wouldn't be any good to be quite central, would it? Um, and um, then we have an option here on step 23 and 24 for the undercarriage um, route here. Not quite sure what that means just yet. Um, yeah, not clear at all on that, to be honest. I'll have to have a look at that and come back to it. Um, step 25 and 26, more spars and mountings there um, to be put in. Some colouring to do there, um, painting to, to do if you're going to do open gun bays. Um, and then, obviously, the 1A variant of the Spitfire was, uh, had, was armed with eight... Was it eight Browning machine guns? I think it was eight. I can only count six here. Um, the one B replaced one or two of the machine guns on either side with Hispano cannons, and um, that version was soon, as I understand it, um, recalled because the Hispano cannons weren't reliable. Well, the cannon was reliable, but the feeding ammunition feeding drum wasn't. Um, so there we go so machine guns in there um, wing tops on and so the build sequence here it's really interesting to note on the 148 scale the build sequence is the same for the 148th as it is for the 124th in other words what airfix are doing is they're saying put the wing tops on first okay so um, here we ha have them here um, and then fit the wing complete to the fuselage. Now, I think it's worthwhile taking a look at this, and a quick nod to Nigel's modelling bench here. Might be worthwhile taking a look at perhaps an alteration in the build sequence, but maybe not. You know, we'll see. Um, and uh, so that that's a, a, a I think a thing that I'm thinking about right now. Next steps: uh, tailplanes, um, making sure the angles are 90 degrees with respect to the vertical tailplane, with the uh, the rudder not fitted. Fitting of elevators and rudders, so it's a one-piece elevator here, and the rudders, remember, on these aircraft were canvas-covered, doped canvas-covered um, arrangements. So, some paint work on that will be useful. Uh, and then we go to step 47 uh, and 48, the so fitting of the air intake there um, in 48, and the cowling cover there for the lower cowling cover. Uh, and then we're into the radiator. On, on that side. Um, forgive my most lamentable ignorance, I can't remember what G28 actually is, whether it's some form of radiator or cooling heat exchanger or something, I really don't know. 
um, and step 52 with the rear uh, oleo leg, the undercarriage there. Um, then we're into options again here, whether we want undercarriage up or down, or should we go for the undercarriage down variant? Um, and uh, we're remembering that the angle here is 93 degrees because the oleos point slightly outwards. So there we go. I think this is a good set of instructions, I will say. I think they're pretty, pretty complete. Um, and we're moving over across to the final stages of um, exhaust pipes, um, propellers, the gun sight, um, and then well, even the rear view mirror. They've even got a rear view mirror in there. Isn't that good? Uh, and then uh, glass parts. And I don't know whether we'll be able to get um, aftermarket uh, masks for these or whether I'm going to have to make some of my own. Um, if I do have to make some of my own, you can all have a jolly good laugh at me whilst I fumble away and fiddle about doing that. So I might even put that on video for you. In fact, I probably will. Um, and then final options with uh, doors here. And um, there you are, complete. So there's a couple of options on the uh, colour variants. There's the um, 222 Squadron variant here uh, with the... Um, it's beige or beige green, approximately sky, it says. Well, we'll see about that. I'll have a look. Um, and then the other option, which is, I think, the one I might go for, with um, is the Royal Air Force Duxford um, 611 West Lancashire Squadron Spitfire with the half black, half white. This was called Knight, apparently. Um, and then white. Um, I may go for this option here. I think that looks like, um, like quite a good one. So... I think a substantially good set of instructions there for that. Um, the, um, the cockpit parts, the glass parts, there seem to be more than I would need there, but I suspect that's for options and so on and so forth. So um, I'll have a look at them in more detail a bit later. Uh, this I have opened up, so the parts are pretty good here. Now, there's one thing I did notice, which is that if we look from the back here, um, the uh, port wing uh, or the port fuselage section the vertical tail plane is straight that looks quite nice and on the other side it looks may it looks like it may be slightly bent out I, i'm not sure it's perhaps po possibly because the um the sprue is slightly bent it doesn't look like that's the case but um that's not really going to tell until we take those off the sprue which i I might do during the course of the video, perhaps, we'll see. Um, the um, moulding here looks pretty good, quite detailed on the underside. Let's just zero in and have a little look here across there. That looks quite nice. Yeah, there's quite a lot of detail to see there. Um, there's the options underneath there for removing bits and pieces if we need to, I believe. Um, that plastic's very thin there. You can see the light through it which is quite an interesting one um, and yeah that, there's there's some molding marks on these just here it might not be quite so easy to see but i don't think it's you know it's nothing to get our knickers in a twist about i don't think to be perfectly truthful with you and i suspect under some mr surface so that will look quite good um so here we are into um rudder elevator rear tail planes here let's zero back out again because i note that i'm off camera slightly there um let's get that right um cockpit inner halves again on the 124th scale that's quite substantial on this they're not quite so substantial so i'm gonna have to do my research there bulkheads um that would be the wheel wells there or the wheel well inners there um and moving along we have here um, sprue G, so we've got a three-bladed propeller, but there's also a two-bladed propeller here, which I think is a, um, I think it's a Rotol two-bladed propeller, but it's a, um, I think it's not a variable pitch propeller. I can be corrected on this because I know there are lots and lots of experts um, on this sort of thing, um, and come along and tell me if you if you do. I think this might have been a De Havilland propeller, a uh, variable pitch version. Uh, but there we are, so some um, additional bits of um, information required there. Those are the machine gun halves. You can see they're quite small, actually, um, So in terms of 128th to 124th scale. 
Um, and, oh, there's a surprise, actually, I didn't realise that. There's another propeller there. Um, that's on Spruce C, so um, not clear on why that is. More research required. Um, the inner cockpit parts, the, um, what are they called? Not called bulkheads, they're called something else. Um, exhaust nozzles and so on, pretty much all as one part. Um, so there we are. Um, so that's the next project in the line here. I'll keep that out, I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. Um, and hopefully um, you'll see this being built in the new year um, and before the Katare model that comes in February or March or so. But uh, there you go. Thank you very much for having a look again. I um, hope you enjoyed that um, and we'll um, catch up with you another time on some other builds. Thanks very much. Bye for now.